Hi folks, Sheila Corinthians here again, bringing you another tasty tale from her wee house in the garden here in St Andrews. Now today's story is about something that I like to eat as often as I can for my breakfast. Maybe you like it too. Aye, it's porridge. But before I start the story, I'd like to tell you a wee bit about porridge. You see, you might think that porridge is something that is particularly Scottish. And I we do eat a lot of porridge here in Scotland. But people the world over eat porridge, or their own version of porridge. You see, in days gone by, it was sometimes all folk had to eat. It was cheap, it filled you up, it was good for you. And it was easy to cook. And they didn't just eat it for their breakfast. Oh no, my grandfather helped me. But in his day, and that would be about a hundred years ago, they used to pour the porridge in a drawer in the kitchen. And when it was cooled, they would tack a slice off and wrap it up. And the men folk would tack it out into the fields to eat while they were working. And then when they come back at night, sometimes another slice would be taken off and it would be fried up with an egg for their supper. So you see, folk used to eat an awful lot more porridge than we do these days. But here's my story. And it's no Scottish story, it's a story that originally came from Germany. Once upon a time, there was a wee lassie called Annie. And she's tied with her mother in a wee village that was that poor that sometimes the folk didn't have enough to eat. And instead of going out to play, Annie had to go gleaning in the fields after the harvester. Now gleaning, it was hard work. She had to crawl around on the ground on her hands and knees, picking up the ears of grain that had been dropped by the men working in the field. She and several of her pals had got permission for the farmer to do this, provided that they gain back half of what they collected off the ground. So while the lassies worked, they had to watch out for the birds. The gulls and the craws were diving down, trying to get the seeds, angry that the lassies were tatting their food. Aye, it was hard work. They had to crawl about and pick up a few seeds at a time, blow off the dirt, and then put them in their peeny pocket. And after an entire morning of working, sometimes in the cold wind, sometimes with the sun beating down on them, they had to give half of what they collected to the farmer. Well, one day, they'd done all this, and they were making their way home. It would be in the early afternoon. And as they walked towards the village, they saw an old wifey sitting at the side of the road and she shouted out to them lassies lassies would anybody hear enough food to gee an old wifey now annie's friends just closed their in and turned their heads away and kept walking but well annie was not like that although she was poor and she had already given half of the ears of oats to the farmer, her mother had brought her up to share. And she knew that if she gave away some of her oats, the porridge she would hear that night would be guy thin and watery. But how could she enjoy it if she kent that this old woman was gone hungry? So she reached in her peeny pocket and she gave the old wifey half of the oats. 
Well, the old wifey was that pleased. She says, oh, thank you, lassie, thank you. Now, because you've been so kind, I'm going to give you a present. And she reached behind her and she took out a wee black cooking pot. Here, have this. And he said, oh, no, you're all right. You're all right. Uh, I've got one of them at home already. I didn't need it. But the old wife insisted. Here, tack it. Tack it, she said. And so Annie, being polite, she took the pot. And she was just about to mack her way home again when the old wifey says, now wait a minute, that pot is no ordinary pot because that pot is a magic pot. I'll tell you a wee spell. And if you say the spell, that pot will cook you the best porridge you've ever tasted. So Annie laughed and thought, oh, the poor old wifey. She's just telling me a story here, a fairy tale. But being polite, she held on to the pot and she listened while the wifey whispered the spell in her ear. And then she said goodbye and made her way home with the pot. When she got home, she told her mother the story and her mother said, oh, I wonder if it's true. Let's try it. So they put the pot on the table and Annie said the spell that the old wifey had taught her. Hubble, bubble, hubble, bubble, porridge in the pot. Hubble, bubble, hubble, bubble, mack it nice and hot. And immediately the pot began to bubble up with the creamiest porridge that they'd ever seen. Well, when it was reached the top, Annie said the other bit of the spell. She said, hubble, bubble, hubble, bubble, porridge in the pot. Hubble, bubble, hubble, bubble, now it's time to stop. And the pot stopped marking the porridge. Well, the, Annie's mother shared out the porridge between them, but there was still an awful lot left. So they thought, well, the folk next door didn't have much food and the folk on that side didn't have much food either. So they shared what was left with them. And then Annie minded that the folk in the house behind and the folk in the house across the road wouldn't have much food either. So she decided to make another pot. She got the pot and she said, hubble, bubble, hubble, bubble, porridge in the pot. Hubble, bubble, hubble, bubble, mack it nice and hot. And once again, the pot filled up with steaming, creamy porridge. And the chef, then when it was at the top, Annie said the other bit of the spell. Hubble, bubble, hubble, bubble, porridge in the pot. Hubble, bubble, hubble, bubble, now it's time to stop. And they shared the porridge with the folk across the road and the folk behind them. Well, a few weeks later, Annie went a walk to visit her granny. And her mother decided she was feeling a wee bit hungry. And she thought, I've heard Annie telling that pot to mac porridge, so I'll here go. So she said to the pot, Hubble, bubble, hubble, bubble, porridge in the pot. Hubble, bubble, hubble, bubble, mack it nice and hot. And I, sure enough, the pot, the pot began to mack its porridge. And the porridge began to rise up in the pot. And when it was nearly at the top, Annie's mother realised that she'd never really paid attention to what Annie said to make it stop. So she just shouted out, um, porridge pot, stop. But it didn't stop. Shouted out, please stop. I've got enough. But the porridge pot didn't stop. It kept marking porridge and the porridge rose up and rose up until it was spilling out of the top of the pot. 
it's filled out the top of the pot and covered the kitchen table. It draped half the kitchen table until it covered the hail flare. And then it began to go out the floor and down the path and down the road and into everybody's house in the village. So well, meanwhile, Harry was coming home to her grannies. And when she got to the edge of the village, she was met by a sea of porridge. And she realised what must have happened. So she shouted out in her loudest voice, Hubble, bubble, hubble, bubble, porridge in the pot. Hubble, bubble, hubble, bubble. No, it's time to stop. And the pot stopped marking the porridge. And Annie had to wade her way home through the porridge. And everybody else had to wade their way into their houses. But nobody complained. You see, nobody in that village was hungry again for a long, long time. And that can only be a good thing. So that's my story about the magic porridge pot. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you'll join me again on Monday for another one of my homespun tales. Or next Thursday for another tasty tale. But if you can't wait that long, why don't you pop over to the Tag Team Tales page on Facebook where lots of my storytelling friends are sharing stories. Bye for now.